Hi all, this is Maylene Velasquez. I am a licensed clinical social worker and a registered play therapist. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about how I work with children that might be experiencing anxiety. And so usually the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to have a meeting with the caregivers to collect as much information as I can about what's going on with the child. I want to know things like what kind of symptoms they're experiencing, what the caregivers are noticing, what they've tried to do, what the dynamics are like, how the client is functioning, and also any stressors that might have contributed to the way that the client might be feeling at the time. Once I have collected all that information, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a session with the child. And during this session, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use a gingerbread person to check in with the client what happens in their body when anxiety begins to hit. So I'm going to show them this and if I'm doing this via telehealth, I'm going to email um, the parent this ahead of time. And if the family doesn't have access to a printer, then I'm going to do it on a stick figure. And at times where I have run out of ink in my office, um, in the past, I would do the stick figure uh, instead of using the gingerbread person. So that works just fine. The prompt that I'm going to give my client is I'm going to say, I want you to use lines, shapes, colors, or words to represent what happens in your body when you start to notice anxiety. And so then when the child has completed their drawing, it might look something like this. And I'm going to ask them to tell me as little or as much as they want about what they just drew. And I really want to ask any follow-up questions that I might have. I might ask, you know, tell me about this part if the child didn't tell me. So, you know, a common thing I hear is I started to feel something really weird. It started in my stomach and then like the strange feeling just kind of like went up my throat. Right? So um, this is the way that a child would describe to me the way that anxiety has been kicking in. Right? And so I want to um, really get a full explanation as to what's happening and that's going to do two things. First, it's going to give me an understanding as to how to best intervene. So if I have a client that's telling me that their throat um, um, closes up and that they really can't breathe, then my interventions are not going to focus on breathing relaxation strategies because that might be at the beginning a little bit more distressing for my client. So I'm going to do something a little bit different. It's also going to help my client to really gain awareness as to what's happening and to recognize triggers that might come up and how their body it becomes activated when anxiety begins to kick in. Once I have provided that information, the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to provide some psychoeducation as to how anxiety affects the brain. The information that I give will greatly depend on the age of the child that I'm working with, but usually I'm going to use my fist to represent the back of the brain and our survival parts, um, the middle brain and how that handles emotions, and the front of the brain and how that's in charge of rational and logical thinking. And so I'm going to keep it really simple and I'm just going to explain that when our body gets filled with cortisol and with adrenaline, it becomes really, really hard to think clearly and it becomes really difficult for me to even tell myself, hey Maylene, I'm safe in this moment. That information is going to be the way for me to then provide some psychoeducation for coping strategies. And because I'm just beginning treatment with my clients, I'm going to provide them three or four strategies to begin with for them to practice during the week. The first strategy that I usually like to begin with is box breathing. And if you're familiar with box breathing, what I usually do is I draw um, a box on a paper. And so what I would tell the client is that this is called box breathing because you're breathing to the count of four. And then I'm going to show them how to do the breath to the count of four. So I'm going to practice it with a client. I'm going to say we're going to inhale to the count of four. We're going to hold to the count of four, exhale to the count of four and hold to the count of four. What I also want to do is I want to explain to my client that it takes about 15 to 20 minutes, give or take, for our bodies to calm after we've become really activated. And what that means is that sometimes we're going to have to practice strategies over and over and over in order to see that calming of, dis of the stress in our body and in order to think clearly. And then you can move into some more cognitive tasks if that's the type of interventions that you're doing. 
The next strategy that I'm gonna to give to clients is relaxing breath, also known as 478 breathing. And as you know by now, I really like props and I really like to represent whatever it is that I'm doing using a visual because a visual helps to reinforce what we're doing. So I'm gonna draw on a piece of paper, three lines of varying sizes. And what I'm gonna tell my client is I'm gonna tell them we're gonna do this breathing, it's called 478. Um, it's very simple. And what we're gonna do is that we're gonna inhale to the count of four. We're gonna hold the breath to the count of seven. And we're gonna exhale to the count of eight. For me, it helps if at first I give the explanation and I show the visual. Then I show the client how I would do it. And then we have an opportunity to practice together. Next, I'm gonna provide my client with some simple grounding strategies, beginning with a visual grounding. What I'm gonna have my client do is I'm gonna have them pick a color. So let's say they pick the color green. I'm gonna have them then look around the room and count how many items they find that are the color green. When they're finished, I'm gonna have them take a breath and on a scale from zero to 10, account where they are um, on a level of distress, right? With zero being the calmest that they can be and with 10 being the worst panic attack that they've ever experienced. If the number is high, for some clients, high might be a five. For some clients, high might be a four. So use your clinical judgment here. Um, I will have them practice it again. Another strategy that I'm gonna give them is I'm gonna give them grounding to the count of two, which is where we pick two things in the room that we can see and we name them. So I might be like a pink highlighter and blue highlighter. Two things that I can touch. So I can touch my shirt and I can touch my hair and two things that I can hear. I can hear the sound of my voice and I can hear cars outside. And I'm gonna have them practice that over and over and over. When they're feeling the distress, considering that it takes 15 to 20 minutes to regulate the nervous system. What I'm gonna do after I've provided that education and practice it with the client is that then I'm gonna invite the caregiver into the session. And I'm gonna let my client know that I will be inviting the caregiver into the session for us to review a little bit of what we discussed. In here, I like to have the client then share with the parent what we discussed and give them an opportunity to teach some of the strategies that uh, we just practiced together. Of course, I let the client know that I'm there, so if they run into a blank, then I'm gonna be there to provide the information that they need. The purpose of doing that is really reinforcing with the parent, one, the work that you're doing, but two, giving the strategy so that then the family can practice them together when they're at home and then they can support the child's well-being. At each follow-up session, then I'm gonna collect some information about how did things go during the week? What went well? What was challenging? And from there, begin to tweak the interventions begin to provide more, usually working with clients from the frame of imagining a fire where the fire represents the symptoms that are really getting in the way and using these interventions or these coping strategies as a way to lower the fire, to turn it off. And that once we have it under control, then we work on figuring out how did this get started and how do we work together so that the family has a really solid maintenance plan and that they know what to do in the event that this rises up in the future. And so these are some of the ways that I work with children that are experiencing anxiety. I hope that this is useful and helpful to your practice. If there's anything else that you would like to see, please let me know. Thank you, bye.